Hey guys, welcome to Isaiah's Reviews, and today we're going to take a little peeky poo into Mark Hamill's opinion on the new Star Wars franchise owned by Disney. I think he hates it, and I think by the time this is over with, you can kind of see that yourself. I've been uh, plowing through as much information as I could find. A bulk of the information, a bulk of the telltale signs to me is coming out of this past Star Wars celebration a week ago. Uh, it was like their 40th anniversary, I think that's correct, 40th celebration. Um, so they had a, like a whole uh, tribute to all the old heads and stuff like that. And I think that might have sparked some things uh, in Mark Hamill's mind there and made him super opinionated about moving into the future of Star Wars. And this may made me believe that Mark Hamill, Luke Skywalker, plays zero role, kind of, in, in the new franchise, or he's not getting enough face time. Uh, they hated his ideas. They already went into it with a game plan, and he's not the star because uh, a lot of the, the running thing throughout this whole campaign by Disney has been girl power, girl power. Ray is that girl power. And that's fine if it contributes to the storyline. If it is the storyline, a true storyline, uh, that's fine. But whenever they're, when you have that feeling that they're forcing it down your throat instead of letting us make the assumption for ourselves, if I had a dollar for every time, I went back and watched all the panels, okay? That's a lot. A lot of time I went, went in to looking at these panels and these everything about the Star Wars celebration from last week. A lot of time I'll never see again. But uh, girl power, you know, that's a motivating factor. And you can see the head of Lucasfilms. She is, you know, she's the puppet. She is the, the main contact to Disney. And she micromanages everything that has to do with Star Wars, period. And so through this, you'll see, especially at the end. I'm saving the best for the end because it's so cringeworthy. It's so... Ah, it makes you just want to bundle up in, in like some snow gear and stuff. Put your snow goggles on. It's just that cringy. And then she has to intervene and stop Mark Hamill. So first off, let's look at Mark Hamill compares Force Awakens to Transformers. Um, I'll leave links to all these videos here and give credit to some of the people that have posted some things there. Since I started this research at the beginning of the week, um, there's been a few videos that's been taken down and, and been copyright claimed and just been completely stripped off of YouTube. So if I can hurry up and get these on uh, before they are stripped down, and mine may, may end up being, but I'm not going to monetize it, uh, you know, pass this along, share this to all you peeps, uh, uh, and, 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 you know, it's just knowledge about maybe you know maybe disney maybe it's a different vibe that, than what it was in the beginning because in the beginning it was like growing up and, and learning things together as a group and all these people were doing this for the first time on the scale and they've kind of replicated that with the force awakens all these people the majority of these people were doing this really on this scale for the first time so they're trying to capture lightning in a bottle again, and Mark Hamill makes reference for that, to that quite a bit, quite often. So uh, let's get started with Mark Hamill compares Force Awakens to Transformers, and, and, and then we'll talk about it afterwards a little bit. So we signed on, and, uh, you know, like I say, I didn't, know, I didn't know it was going to be bought by Disney, because this was summer of 2012. Then they announced that Disney had bought Lucasfilm uh, around Halloween, which was October 30th, uh, it was announced. And, um, you know, we didn't know who the director was going to be. And then, then they announced J.J. Abrams, and it all came out. It was all, all very, very exciting. And, uh, um, I, you know, I hope people are happy. It seems like, because uh, in Hollywood, remember, kids, it's not important if it's, of high quality, only if it makes money. <laughs> now, I don't want to, I mean, a good example would be Transformers. <laughs> and to be completely fair to Michael Bay, I've never seen a Transformers film. I know they're among the highest grossing films in Hollywood history. 
I saw a trailer, and I'm too old to process that much information. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the thing looked like it was edited in a Cuisinart. They, if you try and count one 1,000, two 1,000, and, and it, it's just mind-boggling. And they're cutting everywhere where you don't know where you are. I mean, it's, the, it's cinema of bewilderment, you know? But what I'm saying is, they keep me... I've, all I'm saying is, I've never met anybody that's my age, or probably even your age, that say, oh, I love that movie. You know, most people are disparaging of the, that particular franchise, but they keep making them because they make huge amounts of money. And oh my God, I just realized this is all on film. <laughs> <laughs> because I shouldn't have gotten that specific, you know? I mean, especially since I've never seen those movies, you know? <laughs> uh, but my point, my larger point was... It doesn't matter if it's good as long as it makes money. So uh, I'm, because The Force Awakens made a lot of money, I can't be, it doesn't, it's not ergo, it's good. And, uh, ah, that was, you know, he's, he's kind of like, I didn't like it. In my, in my eyes, you know, he was like, hey, this is Hollywood. This is not your, your childhood being recreated again. Uh, because he does make reference later to lightning in a bottle and stuff. But I just don't think he likes it. It's, it's headed in the wrong direction. And he knows more than we do about the script, but I don't think he knows that much because uh, some of the things intentionally were done back in the original, like the fact that they were brother and sister. They would film stage mock scenes so that the cast and other people had no idea. There was only a, a couple people at best that knew they were actually brother and sister in the original three. So... Um, you know, there's things that they could not be telling him, but they're also not, you know, seeking his advice about a thing, period. And you may, you may be like, yeah, you know, he's not the main guy. He's a supporting actor in this whole thing. Um, that may be the case. I think he's used to the originals. Uh, when George Lucas was actually writing, you know, the film while it was being filmed. I mean, he was still in the process of figuring it out, and, and Carrie Fisher helped a, a buttload in, in, in rewrites and stuff like that, and they all contributed uh, to a degree, and they were all kind of winging it and figuring it out together as they went because something like that hadn't really existed before. So let's look at the next one. Mark Hamill tried to warn us. So this is another older one about uh, Star, Wars, Star Wars Future. Let's all repeat the mantra, it's only a movie. And if you think you're going to go into the movie and recapture your childhood, you're setting yourself up for disappointment. I thought, look, why mess with the success? We're never going to catch lightning in a bottle again. We had a beginning, a middle, and an end. Let's let the memories suffice. Uh, but, and I said, you know what? My out is that Harrison's never going to do this. Harrison Ford again, and he's talking about the old days, Carrie Fisher. What, yeah. what did you, how did you guys reminisce? I said, you guys, I have a very bad feeling about this. Maybe we should have just left uh, well enough alone. You, know? you have definitely got the best role in this film, you haven't think? you? You think? <laughs> Top dad entrance. <laughs> Wink. I think he's kind of like, uh, oh, you think? You think? Okay, well, you have no idea. So now let's move into the Star Wars Celebration videos. Now this is where I've got the most content because this is the newest relevancy to what we know is coming, uh, The Last Jedi. Um, and I think he just totally hates it. I think it gets worse for him. I think he was super nervous about The Force Awakens. Uh, he didn't like how that turned out. I, I believe that. Um, he makes reference to that. And uh, he hates, I think he hates the direction of the new one and the direction of all of it, period. But let's look at um, let's look at Mark Hamill talks about his disappointment. Mark, yes. what was your first reaction when you found out what your part on episode seven would actually be? Did you think it was funny? Were you insulted? No, no, I wasn't insulted. I thought it was a really uh, uh, a great surprise, but I don't think they prepared me correctly. You know, in other words, you know, I went to training and, you know, I lost all this weight and did all these things. And I thought, I must be doing something physical if they're sending me to the gym twice a week uh, and torturing me physically. But uh, I think they could have prepared me a little better. 
It reminds me of the story of the guy that goes on vacation. He has his friend watch his house, see? And the guy goes away and he comes back and asks his friend, it's all about preparing you, right, for, for the fact that, well, it's going to happen. The guy goes on vacation, he comes back and he says to his friend, so how did it go? And his friend says, well, your cat's dead. And the guy said, what? My cat's dead? Oh, my God, that's terrible. And why did you tell me like that? He said, well, the friend says, well, how did you want me to tell you? He said, well, you could have prepared me a little bit. You know, you could have said that your cat was playing on the roof and... You could say he saw a bird and he scampered across the roof and he took a misstep and he fell to the ground and unfortunately he didn't make it. Something like that. My friend says, okay. And the guy says, any other news? And his friend says, well, your mother was playing on the roof. (laughs) Now, I tell that because it's funny because it's about cats dying. But beyond that, it's about preparing you, about saying, oh, by the way, you know all that workout where you lost all the weight? You're going to have to turn and remove your hood. I thought, <laughs> oh, i got to lie down for a minute. Oh, oh, oh. And I'm a big fan of Michael Arndt. Were there any story ideas from him that you liked that didn't make it into the final film? I didn't get to read Michael's script. I'd love to. But I did go up to Northern California, and the artists were saying, oh, I've been drawing you for a year. And you saw all this conceptual art where Art Luke's, you know, in scuba gear with, uh, you know, with uh, Daisy's character. What's her name? Ray. Ray. Uh, (laughs) Listen, you guys, I haven't seen it in a long time. Luke Skywalker has vanished. I said, oh, this is going to be good. (laughs) (laughs) I'm reading, reading. I'm making notes. Every time everyone says, you know, Skywalker must be stopped, page 34. (laughs) The sword of Skywalker is powerful, page 77. Uh, So I have this long list. And, you know, I'll tell you where I thought I came in. In the forest, when the, the lightsaber goes like this and flies off. I said, oh, what a great entrance. Ah! (laughs) <laughs> Ray caught it? She hasn't even been to take up for training! <laughs> What's the deal? I know, everyone said... <laughs> you, you didn't finish your training either, so you have no room to talk. I was a, you know, a Jedi school dropout. But uh, I had to get back to my friends. That was my excuse. Look, what does Luke know? Can he feel that Han Solo's in danger? All those things, see? I said, even if you don't don't plan to tell the audience, I have to know for myself. I made up a whole backstory of what happened between getting my medal, and yes, I agree, the Wookiee should have gotten one too. But uh, but you're right, I said, because if you don't tell the audience, it's not about me anymore. It's really not my story. It's the story of Ray and Finn and Poe and all of them, which is the way it should be. But um, uh, you'll find out more. Uh, I don't think anyone will ever say, that's exactly what I wanted. And I better be careful, by the way. Because I sa- I, for seven, I said, in front of a crowd like you, I said, no matter what we do, there, you know, it's, it's going to be... Uh, we can't please everyone. The build-up and, and John Williams' music, and, you know, I thought it worked very well. In fact, I, I want to do movies now where I don't do anything, I don't talk, <laughs> I get second billing, and, you know, I'm in the movie less than 30 seconds. Less is more. And so I'm reading, 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 where is Luke, where is Luke? Everybody's talking about me. It's the most elaborate entrance in the history of show business. And then it's over. You show up, turn around, pull down your hood. You don't even know what's, what, you know, it, it's really literally a cliffhanger. That's what I love, the visual pun of him standing on a cliff. Did you get that? Subtle. And, uh, and someone said to me, is that a gravestone next year? You remember that question? 
I don't know. It looked like a rock to me. So that was the 2016 Star Wars Celebration. Now, from now on, we're going to move into the 2017 Star Wars Celebration stuff where we can see this sort of attitude, to me, getting worse. It's just... So he, he progressed from the Force Awakens attitude of, you know, hated the idea, hated his appearance, thought that he should have been the one to grab the saber out of the snow whenever it flew to Rey in The Force Awakens. It should have been him there to, uh, to make his appearance because she has zero training. That doesn't... He's admitted, he said during the 2017, this year's uh, uh, Star Wars celebration, that he had suggested things to J.J. Abrams, shoved to the side. Um, you know, they didn't want to really hear his approach period to anything and so he's just kind of got this attitude the hell with it i'm uh i have a contract i have to be obligated to that but i could give two craps less about this so i don't know if they rubbed him the wrong way or he just totally hates the storyline it doesn't make much sense it doesn't stay as true to the original as he thought since he's a part of it he should know but i hope that's i, I would hate to see that he's just not liking the fact that he's not in the limelight uh, like he was originally or I don't want it to suck believe me I don't want all this time and all this anticipation uh, to go to waste uh, I don't want it to suck I want it to be successful but you know all these versions of what could have been will surface at some point in, in, in our lifetime and, and I hope that they're not just forcing this girl power situation down our throats because you know these movies are made four years ago five years ago and then in that time frame, we were all wanting female lead roles to exist. You know, we were starting to get bogged down with male superheroes. And I was too. I was like, okay, well, now we're getting that in abundance. Just boom, throw it in our face all at one time. And you can easily get burned out on that. And with Star Wars being this huge, massive force coming in, and they're trying to push that, and if, if it's being pushed too much and too obvious it'll take away from the storyline that's that is my number one concern he knows a lot that he can't talk about because he still wants to get paid but you know after the fact after his contract's out whatever his contract stipulations are maybe we'll find out the truth from him at some point in time but that's just what i'm thinking now but let's roll into the 2017 stuff uh the the newest things there's three more clips left the last one being the juiciest one uh, i never said this video was going to be short by the way it's a long video so i mean the whole thing collectively so here we go when i read eight i told ryan i fundamentally disagree with virtually everything you've decided about my character but you know other than that i can't really describe more but it's it's, it's it was as shocking to me uh to read what ryan had written as I'm sure it will be for the audience. Do you make a turn to the dark side? It's, uh, it's possible. possible. Anything's possible. I, you know what happened? I read one theory and I said to Ryan, I said, this is the one I want to do. <laughs> and it was Did that... Did you have a say in it? No. So that was a little little taste. And you can, uh, you can sort of see Ray maybe uh, cringe a little. And I say Ray. I don't mean Ray. But uh, you can see her cringe just a little bit. Uh, over it, I think, or maybe she's just totally used to the way he is, or not used to the way he is. Um, so let's look um, at another Mark Hamill interview at the Star Wars Celebration about how he does like everybody's role except for his. The more has, challenging, yeah, well, yes, and I think he has more leeway to really mess things up. It's it's Colin Trevorrow that's going to have to tie all the loose ends <laughs> together. I mean, you, know, you talked about the reaction to the first script, obviously, that funny kind of thing about waiting for Luke to appear, right. et cetera. What was your reaction when you finally got a chance to read this one? Were you satisfied and excited in terms of how integral Luke is and was to the story? Were you surprised by what Ryan chose to do? Uh, yes, I was very surprised. And I have to tell you, and I, I, I should have realized that when I read Seven, I said, I love everybody's part except mine. <laughs> and on, on this one... It was similar in the sense that I said to Ryan, I'm so surprised how you see Luke. I mean, 
I mean, there's all this conjecture. You know, I remember reading one uh, theory that they've cloned Luke's hand right. into an evil Luke. Now, what actor doesn't want to play his own evil twin? <laughs> it's a classic. So I said, ooh, I pitched that to him. He said, no, no, we couldn't do anything that had been done before. Right. So a lot of the fan fiction stole some of the best Those ideas. Damn good ideas, ruined it. All right, so that one wasn't too bad. He was just in discussion mode. He hated his role. All these are little little clues that lead up to this last cringe-worthy thing. I will leave a link to uh, Disney's um, YouTube channel where this celebration was streamed live, and you can go back and look at all everything. Go back and watch. This is from the panel of the new cast uh, that does feature Mark Hamill in with it. Um, go back and watch that entire panel, especially when Mark makes his appearance uh, through his entire stay, his attitude, and how the director and the president over Lucasfilm is just damage control, cringe-worthy mode at the end of this. this is, there's an extended clip available of this. This is shortened and squished in, but you, can, you get the idea, but you really need to watch what happens after this and like you know mark's reactions and, and stuff to things this is a lot longer this is just a shortened thing to give you an idea in in seven you discovered luke obviously is a hermit on this island that he's there's so much unsaid about where he's been and what he's done and actors like to write their own backstories you know you want to figure out what what you've done and where you've been and, but I realized that wasn't really important to the story of Force Awakens. I still made it up myself. <laughs> and, you know, I, I tried to show it to JJ, and he, you know, was accommodating, but basically patted me on the head, gave me a cookie, and made me go away. <laughs> because, it, you know, whatever, make it up. I mean, they allude to things that have happened, and to a certain extent, you know, it's not Luke's story anymore. But I, I think he's an important part of the overall arc of the saga. And again, there's a lot of mystery about him, even within the film. So you have to fill in your, your own backstory. I'm sure there'll be comic books and video games and novels that tell the story, but... Uh, I'm so. just going to break in here and make sure that everybody out there realizes he is so significantly important to the ne this next film. You have oh. no idea. Well, that's good to hear. Mr. Modesty. But yeah, I think you're able to gather the tone from Mark Hamill. And you can notice the director look over. You can notice that the president of Lucasfilm kind of looks over. That that's not fake. Like, she totally made the decision to pick the microphone up and interrupt him digging his own hole. And I think he just didn't, he was in I don't give a damn mode. Now, he also did a tribute to Carrie Fisher uh, during this uh, Star Wars celebration. And I don't know if he was just flooded with emotion. I don't know if alcohol has been involved with this entire weekend, this past weekend. But he made a lot of boo-boos. Um... And there's a better, juicier videos that are present somewhere. I can't find them anymore because I started like looking into this at the beginning of the week, and I would save links and, and email them to myself for today because I had the time to do this today with the intent of doing it today. Today, and uh, there's a couple that have been taken down, and I remember them being a lot juicier than these. Like this is a watered down version of of how Mark felt or feels about um, the Star Wars franchise now. And and I don't think he likes it. And I think it's proof is in the pudding here about it. Um, now, I suggest going back and, and looking at any panel that he's on, on this, I'll find the uh, link to the Disney um, uh, YouTube channel that, that streamed the Celebration Live and stuff like that. Um, but he totally dropped the ball, I guess, on his feelings anyway about it and, and really caught Disney off guard uh, and and it showed right there that that was the cringe worthy moment where she's like we got we got to stop this train wreck from happening because he was just spilling on the verge of spilling everything that he thought it sucked so in my, in my eyes but this has been Isaiah's reviews hope you've enjoyed this long composed video or compiled clips of Mark Hamill and I think he really does hate the new 
uh, version of Star Wars or the new continuation of Star Wars. And I, I say it over and over again. I think it's the forced uh, theme of, of girl power that doesn't really fit. It, there, it, there's a lot that's missing. Like Maybe the, they'll fill this in here. They're still in post-production. He hasn't seen the final version. So maybe there's a lot of training clips that goes in on her training and learning uh, the Force more than what he's seeing. Uh, maybe he's just recalling him being in the his spots, you know, and they may be filming, they may have filmed a lot of stuff with her individually, like practicing and training. That's He doesn't know about that. You know, they don't share scripts with the other actors if they're not in them with fear of accidentally spilling something like that. It's super secretive. Uh, so who knows? We're still going to find out. But from his perspective, he does not like Star Wars. You can tell. So this has been Isaiah's Reviews. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel and share this video to everybody to get the word out about this because I think this is a cool thing that we can set back and watch it unfold together because I'm a huge Star Wars fan. I love the originals. They'll always be near and dear to the heart. Uh, they're probably going to be better than these new ones, but the new ones are... I'm hoping it are going in a good direction. I just don't want them to force some things on us that, that you know, 10 years down the road, 20 years down the road, you rewatch them and you're like, man, they're forcing this. You know, I don't want to sound like an asshole, but they're forcing this girl power thing too hard. It's taken away from the story. It pulls back a little bit and, and you can't, it stands out too much. You know, let it flow. Let the story happen. And if that, that's what happened originally anyway, Carrie Fisher, like George Lucas, uh, he said he made the original movies for 12 year olds the original star wars for 12 year olds that are figuring out their life figuring out their emotions and trying to set a path and learn a path star wars was going to be that balance that juggle between the dark side and the light side you want to go uh you don't want to go to the dark side uh a strong female character was there um it's the first thing han solo really done or uh Harrison Ford, his first thing, real thing, he did. He was in American Graffiti for a little bit, and uh, uh, George Lucas picked him up for Star Wars. But, uh, you know, a lot of those characters, the first thing that they've done uh, on a big scale like that, uh, you know, he, he made it a dumbed-down story. And maybe Disney's trying to repeat that again. Uh, I don't know. We'll just, we're just going to be amazed together is the bottom line. I don't want to ramble on about it. But make sure to give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Share me to all your social sites. It helps get me to places I can't get to them on. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again right here on Isaiah's Reviews. I still made it up myself. <laughs> and, you know, I, I tried to show it to JJ, and he, you know, was accommodating, but basically patted me on the head, gave me a cookie, and made me go away. <laughs> <laughs> because, it, you know, whatever. Make it up. I mean, they allude to things that have happened. And to a certain extent, you know, it's not Luke's story anymore. But I, I think he's an important part of the overall arc of the saga. And again, there's a lot of mystery about him, even within the film. So you have to fill in your, your own backstory. I'm sure there'll be comic books and video games and novels that tell the story. But uh, like I say, there's... And I shared with Ryan a lot of my own things. I thought, I have to relate to things that are real in my own life to understand where Luke is at this point in his life. I'm so. just going to break in here and make sure that everybody out there realizes he is so significantly important to the ne this next film. You have oh. no idea. Well, that's good to hear. Mr. Modesty. And by the way, I look down and, you know, I see Olaf, I see, I see Wonder Woman, I see God, I see my, I mean, my colleague, <laughs> Daisy, my son, and this one, if she were any cuter, she'd be an actual Disney cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't come any cuter than, than Kelly. I love that you look at me and see an animated character. Thank you. <laughs> um, now, this is a personal question because, you know, I, this is how I approach a lot of my roles. Did you do a lot of physical training to get into Luke, Luke Skywalker? We all had a good laugh about that. <laughs>
Because, you know, when I read the script, the very first line is, Luke Skywalker is vanished. I went, okay, let's go. <laughs> And I'm reading about, everybody talks about me all through the movie. Skywalker must be stopped. <laughs> the sword of Skywalker is dangerous. I kept making all these notes. Ooh, that's the 33rd mention. And people are talking about me, talking about me. You know what I thought was when I, I said, you know what? I know I'm probably going to come in towards the end of the third act. <clears throat> but I thought when, the, when you were in the forest and the lightsaber jiggled in the snow, I said, okay, here I am. <laughs> And it flies into the hands of Ray. <laughs> she didn't even do any training. <laughs> Although you, <laughs> <laughs> Although you all reminded me, I didn't finish. My, I dropped out of school, so I should talk, right? But no, I, it, eventually, it, the only thing that made me nervous is I thought if it if. If it doesn't work and I turn around and it seems so obviously a cliffhanger, which I'm standing on the edge of a cliff, get the metaphor? <laughs> I thought, maybe they should just print to be continued on my forehead. <laughs> but after all that training, I went uh, for 50 weeks, twice a week, uh, never canceled and was never late. Not like some people, I can say, space sis. Uh, but... So I thought I was going to do something physical. <laughs> I read the last page. I said, really? I turn and remove my hood? That's it? <laughs> then I joked about a, a, a big, long speech that was cut at the last minute. See, I lost total credibility with the public be through social media because I lie all the time. <laughs> and I post, you know, an exclusive look at an episode A trailer, and it's a picture of my trailer on the back lot, you know? <laughs> what my kids call dad humor. So this year, someone said, are you going to post one of your classic <laughs> April Fool's jokes? And I said, absolutely not. So believe any outrageous, crazy, or absurd notion I post that day. I, I can't get w away with it anymore. It's like the boy who called Quiet Wolf. Nobody believes me. That's why on this April Fool's, I didn't even wait. I just put April Fool's picture and said, in episode eight, Luke has taken a vow of silence but communicates telepathically. I'm hoping to do voiceover, but director Ryan Johnson is leaning towards subtitles. Make the kids read. Make the kids read. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday was the incredible 40th celebration, which you attended. Uh, anything you want to say to all of these incredible fans after 40 years of going on this journey with you? Well, listen, you people... First of all, if it weren't for you, I wouldn't be sitting here right now. Um, no, honestly. You've been so supportive. Uh, you're there for us all the time. Uh, in good times and bad times. I got a little flack last night because I made the comment, you people are more supportive than my actual family. <laughs> because they criticize and make fun of me. But, and I'm sure you do too, but not to my face. But no, I thank you all so much. I mean, it really is, it's almost moving when you really think about how we've affected so many people, inspired so many people, and uh, it, that it's generational, that it's handed down, the, the original fans are grown with children of their own. I met my wife online for Empire, you know. Uh, whatever it is, it's, uh, and, and going to the hospitals and, and meeting these kids that have such dire adversities in their lives. No, no. It's, it's, uh, it, it, it makes you feel like, it, it puts things in perspective. It makes you think, you know, maybe just doing voiceovers on cartoons and playing the trickster is so trivial compared to the kind of uh, benefits that these kids get from meeting people like this because it's so inspirational to them. I mean, I met a little boy who had lost his arm because of tuberculosis. And he told me I wasn't worried because Luke lost his hand. Oh. I know. You know, I mean, it's, it's tough. I mean, it's, it can be emotionally harrowing. So I always use, kind of use um, reverse psychology and, and say, uh, are you faking? You don't look sick to me. 
come on, you're trying to get out of school work, right? But I'm telling you, it, it's a, a gift and something that I will never take for granted. So thank you all so, so much. All right.